And I invite Justin to read for us the second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
the day to rejoice and be glad. Today we celebrate. You know, everything is finally in place. No more running around, planning. No more, you know, worrying about things. All those plans led you to this very moment, to here, to today. You know, today we celebrate with friends and family. It's wonderful to have everybody together. You can even turn around. You know, turn around to see everybody. Just, just, just to make sure you see everybody. You know, you have a lot of friends, a lot of family here with you to share the joy of this moment. You know, and, and you come here with friends and family. You come here to be joined together in marriage, to become one. Just like we've heard in the very first reading. The man leaves his mother and father to be joined to his wife and become one. You know, you come here to this church and you come to vow your love in front of friends and family and in a sense by, in a sense by doing it, celebrating your marriage here in the church, you also invite God into your relationship into your life together, into your marriage. Just like the couple in Cana, in Galilee. They invited Jesus to their life and they were blessed. They were blessed. That was the very first miracle of Jesus. He made it for newlyweds at their wedding. And I think that the lesson for us here, you know, is that when we invite God into our lives, continues to bless us. And you do it here today, and I hope you will continue to do that throughout your marriage. You know, the vow you take today, it's a solemn vow, a huge step to take into the unknown, but you do it today with confidence, because love brought you here. You know, I see that. I think friends and family, all of you, you know, as we gather here, we know that really love brings you here today. And that's why you are able to make this step with confidence. I know there are, you know, a lot of different emotions and feelings, you know, nervous a little bit, joyful, but you do it with confidence today because love brings you here. You know, and, and as we pray for you, as we witness you vowing your love to each other, as we seal that love with God's blessing, we hope and pray that the love that brought you here only continues to deepen, only continues to grow for years to come. And, and to be able to achieve that, you know, we have that second reading, beautiful reading, that talks about love that is patient and kind. You know, and, and I love the image of, of cross because that's also an image of selfless love. You know, be able to give of yourself to one another. And, and if you have that love, if you continue to grow in that love, you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful marriage together. That's my hope, my prayer, my wish to you. And I'm sure I speak on behalf of everyone. And just one more wish, you know, I always say that to every couple, you know, I started, you know, with my, my brother when he was getting married, and, and I know there was a lot of planning, preparation, and it's a beautiful celebration, and it will continue to be a, a wonderful, beautiful celebration throughout the day today. But my wish to you is that this is not the most beautiful day of your life. That every other day, tomorrow, five years from now, and 10, and 50 years, that those, those days are even better. That's my prayer, my wish to you. May God continue to bless you. Are you ready for this? Yes, wonderful. <laughs> Before you bow to each other, you know, as you come here, I invite you to please state your intentions. And so first I ask you, Kara, Daniel, have you come here free and without reservation to give yourself to each other in marriage? Will you love and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of your lives? And will you accept children loving you from God and bring them up according to love?
love Christ and his church. Since it is your intention to penetrate the marriage, I will invite you now to confirm towards one another, holding hands, profess your vows. And then you'll be going to be first repeating after me. To that care and uh, repeat after me those words of the vows. I, Daniel, Take you, Kara, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you. In good times and bad. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. I, Kara, take you, Daniel, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. You have declared your consent before the church, before all of us. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you all with God's blessing. For God has joined, people must not divide. Congratulations. How about we give them a nice round of applause? Yes, we have a, a beautiful symbolism of that. 